Hey guys, this is Twin City Shredder. This is going to be a comprehensive guide on how I use a PlayStation 4 controller while playing Hell Let Loose. I use a White Oak PS4 keyboard that attaches to the controller. Uh, you can use any one you want, specifically this brand. The keys are active all the time, which is important when playing a game such as Hell Let Loose. If you use the one that has the arrow keys in this section, then you will have to remap those in big picture mode. You can find these on Amazon or eBay for about 20 bucks. So we're going to go ahead and click Steam on the top left. We're going to click Settings and Controller and General Controller Settings. Guide button is the PlayStation button in the center of the controller that allows you to access big picture mode at any time during your gameplay. Checkbox on PlayStation configuration support so that your controller works. So we'll click down here to the PlayStation controller. We're going to go down to hit calibrate. As you'll see here, my dead zones are three clicks above default. This gives me a 13% dead zone, which is very similar to Call of Duty and Battlefield. Um, this will also allow older controllers not to drift um, and things like that. So now we'll get out of here. We're going to hit OK. And on the top right here, we're going to select Big Picture Mode. All right, when in big picture mode, we're gonna select library, we'll select our game, we'll go to manage, we'll go to controller configuration, and we're gonna hit square for browse configs. Your screen may look a little different right there. Once in here, we'll go down to community, and you will find my key bindings right here. Hell let loose. DS4, DualShock 4, Update 8, Post Guns Patch, Natural and Accurate. That YouTube link is just a general link to my YouTube channel in hopes that people can find this video. All right, so what we'll do is we'll hit X to import the configuration. You can see it on here. We'll hit Square to apply configuration. And now, as you'll see, the single button, I have two buttons for this giant button on the controller. Um, this will allow me to select items with the engineer or select outpost or garrison when I'm a squad lead or be able to zoom in and out when I am in a tank. Down here, this might not make that much sense, MRF, but what this is is I've literally just mapped these buttons to keys on a keyboard, um, you know map out however you wish. Where the important aspect of being able to play this game with a controller comes in is the right stick. If you notice here, my mouse sensitivity, this is set at default. But where it gets tricky is in the additional settings, the response curve. I have selected custom curve, and my curve is four clicks away from zero. So you can see the sensitivity changing. Um, the other important aspect is the horizontal scale and the vertical scale. Uh, go ahead and put the blue dot between the T and the A and the dot here directly under the S. That's about it for that. So let's back out. Let's start the game. You'll be able to use the mouse for selecting garrisons or outposts to spawn on on the map. Um, navigating the menu is obviously easier just to use a mouse. Um, but as I'll show you here, you can see that the game is loading my controller configuration. Um, what we'll do is we'll go to options, I'll go to audio. Turn this way down so you can hear me. And then we'll just go through these settings real quick. My field of view, I like at 105. Uh, all these are pretty much default settings. Um, 
you know, keep your markers up at 500 meters. Otherwise, people will get upset with you. Pretty default. Controls. This is really important. 35% is my mouse sensitivity, which is my hip fire, my turning. This allows me to still turn around a vehicle or a wall or something that's a 90 degree corner, uh, even while aimed down sight. 12% um, is the number I prefer. It seems to give me that pixel by pixel accuracy. If I go to 13%, that kind of starts disappearing. If I go to 11%, it gets a little difficult to track enemies um, when enemies are close, running at full speed, and when you're aimed down sight. So yeah, um, I play inverted. That may be different to you. Again, change that in big picture mode if needed. So we'll go down to key bindings. We'll start here on common. Go ahead and pause the video. You can see these keys are just mapped out to regular keys on a keyboard. Um, go ahead and pause the video at any time to copy these. Middle mouse button if you're wondering. I, I happen to have the left D-pad as my ping, so I just map that to the middle mouse button in big picture mode. Let's move on to infantry. You can see pretty basic, just map to regular keys. Left mouse button, right mouse button. Go ahead and pause the video. And we'll move on to driver. All right, there's a lot to map here, so I'm just going to leave this here for a second. Go ahead and pause the video. You can see down here that my gunner shells are mapped to the bottom right buttons on my white oak keyboard. Go ahead and pause it again to catch these bottom ones. Yeah, pretty, pretty simple. Um, oh yeah, we always have to apply settings. Go back into audio, turn up the SFX, and let's enlist. We'll go to an empty server, and I'll show you how this is done. So you can see my controller now. We're going to go ahead and click United States, create unit, create locked infantry unit, and we're just going to spawn right here. All right. So as you see, the left D-pad is my ping. If I want to set a marker, I just hold it down and use the joystick to select enemy tank. Infantry, whatever you want. Um, the up and down are what select my weapon. It's pretty, pretty basic stuff here. Um, for my garrison or outpost, go to my watch, hit L2, and you can see that the big button on the controller is what selects outpost or garrison. This is the same way for engineer and um, if you're playing the recon in a tank and zooming in through the scope or out. So yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll just hit R2 to lay down a garrison or an outpost I mean and it's that simple. You know, select your weapon, R2 is to throw Now what you'll notice is L3 is still click to run. I can still run around. R3 is going to be my ducking, the R3 click, and standing up. I use the start button as a dedicated prone button 
because I definitely want to know in this game when I want to go prone that it's dedicated to a single button. Um, the try the I guess I should say the right D-pad button is my HUD. You know, that'll let me see the enemy markers and stuff like that. Um, the triangle button is set to my map. Really handy. The circle button is how we would get in a vehicle. The X button is for jump. Pretty simple. And as you'll see, if I aim at something really far in the distance, you can see that I'm barely moving the stick and I can get pretty much pixel by pixel and I am, I'm not even holding my breath yet. If I hold my breath, then we can literally get pixel by pixel. But you can maybe see that. But I'm barely touching the stick at all. It's really convenient. So now I'll just use this tree right here to just show you how you can control the recoil. So I won't do anything, and I'm just going to hit it so you can see the recoil. You can see she climbs a bit. But now if I'm aimed down sight, I'm barely pressing on the stick to control my recoil. Oh, square, as you see, is reload. Barely pressing on the stick. All right, so now we'll hop in the truck here. I'll show you how this works. So once in the truck, we're going to hit the start button to start the vehicle. Makes sense, huh? Forward is to drive. Turn. I won't be able to drop a supply crate in friendly territory, but I would press L2. As you can see, can't drop supplies here. I would use L2 to drop my supplies. Back up is just down on the stick. We'll hold it to shut the engine off. Circle to get out. And yeah, now we'll load in to a tank. I find playing this game with a controller just feels really natural and casual and still, still allows you to take out your enemies at long distance or short distance. So let's go, we'll exit this, we'll create a unit, we'll get into a locked armor unit and we will spawn right here and hop in a big tank. The number buttons will allow you to switch seats in the transport truck as well. So let's go ahead and get in, hit circle. We're going to hold down the start button to start it. And the R1 button and the L1, R1 and L1 are going to be shifting your gears. R1 is up shift. As you can see, she's shifting up, and we can go down with L1, even go into reverse, and uh, forward will be your drive. The R2 button still gives you your guns. second seat now and I'll show you that you can move around with left stick you can move the turret mine's inverted L2 is the gun um, to load your weapon we're gonna hit square and 
and it's R2 to fire. Um, now, as you'll see on the right side of the screen, the weapons available. So I have this mapped to these couple buttons down here. You can see when I hit the semicolon, it goes to the HE round, and when I hit the apostrophe, it goes to smoke. Comma goes to the top weapon. Again, just hit R2 to fire. Now we'll go to the third seat here. And since we're just looking around, we're going to use these top buttons here to zoom in and out. So left click on the big button for zooming in. And we're going to move with the right stick. Zoom out. Very, very simple. So let's hop out. Another important thing about this controller is I have the letter P set up for proximity chat. So as you see when I press it, you can see my name on the screen there. Proximity chat. I have the enter button as my team chat, my squad chat, and the question mark is command chat really easy to use. I can run, I can talk, talk to anybody near me, talk to commander. Pretty basic. So as you can see too, just to give you an idea of the sensitivity here, when aimed down sight, it's nice to be able to walk up and round a corner while leaning, and I can do that. And that lets me turn at full speed. When you're creeping on people, you know. And that's about it. F please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below. And I will answer them to the best of my ability. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. I would love to see controller players on the battlefield and want you guys to know that it is possible the I had to play the game for five minutes in order to even upload my configuration and during that match I played a full match and I had 43 kills and 21 deaths so it totally is possible to play with a controller and be accurate and take down the enemy. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope this makes sense to you. See ya.